Let us go down in a word of prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Father God, we wish to thank you this morning. Yet a mouse of living and not the dead. Father God, we want to thank you for your amazing grace. We want to thank you for the God and the angel that stood watch by our bedside all night long while we slumber and slept. Father God, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you for seeing the last day of the week, this seventh day, which represents the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. Father God, I want to thank you that I'm still in my house and strength. I want to thank you that I'm able to go here and there without no one having to lead me and guide me. I want to thank you, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, for this opportunity. I am yet can move around by the power of the Almighty God. Father God, I pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Pray for Israel to be saved. Pray for my family to be saved. Pray for myself to be saved. Pray for everybody who want to be saved to be saved in the name of Jesus. Father God, I want to thank you for what you have done for me up to this present time. I want to thank you for the church house that you give us to worship in, to praise and worship and sing song in the beauty of holiness unto the Lord. Father God, I thank you for everybody in the land today. All over the world today, I just want to thank you for people of every nationality. Father God, let love be in my heart for everybody. Help me, O oh God, to have no respect of person in my life. Help me, dear God, to love everybody the same, knowing that you are the true and living God, knowing that you is a merciful God. Father God, I want to thank you. Thank you, hallelujah, for the job you give me to work up to make a little money to help take care of my, 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 my circumstances here in this world. Father God, I want to thank you for the providence of the United States of America. Lord, I pray for him this morning, oh God, his family, all his cabinet, all his government workers, we are praying for them, dear God, that they can ask God for divine help, how to run and govern this great nation which we are living in today. Oh, not under this nation, dear God, but we are praying for leaders all over the world today and every nation today that they will seek God and ask God to give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding how to run and govern the nation that they are over until Jesus come back. Oh, God, let your hand be upon every nation all over the land, all in the world today. Be with them, dear God, hallelujah, that they can make the right decision, dear God. Father God, there is millions and trillions of hungry and unfortunate people in the land today. Father God, hallelujah, we ask mercy upon these people, dear God. Realize that, dear God, it's just so much one man can do. Oh, yes, Lord, have your way, dear God. Without you, Master, we just can't do nothing. Let the light from heaven shine upon every nation. Let every nation be blessed by God. You see, because of Abraham, all and every nation are blessed because of Abraham. Abraham was a faithful unto God. Abraham offered his only begotten son for a sacrifice, but God sent an angel to stop his hand, not to do the dagger in his son. Look in the bush, Abraham. 
There is a ram, hallelujah. There is a sacrifice in the bush. Unloose your son, hallelujah. God tested Abraham. <clears throat> God tested Abraham. And Abraham was faithful to give up his only son. Just like God give up his only begotten son. And that's why God said, by every, because of Abraham, every nation shall be blessed. Oh God, I'm so glad that I'm going to be blessed. I'm going to be blessed because, you say, every nation because of Abraham, we shall be blessed. Lord, let your power and your anointing and your wisdom and knowledge and understanding be in me, dear God. Help me, dear God. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Bless this internet work, dear God. Let millions of people tune in to the internet and hear your word over the internet system, dear God. Let it spread, dear God. Hallelujah. This will be about a month on the internet. Let the word spread. It <clears throat> touch people hard to tune in to this network and, and hear the word of God being preached by preachers and all those that are preaching the word of God. Tune into YouTube and listen to the word of God. Have mercy, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I am in the mission by myself today. <clears throat> My wife She's on another mission at the nursing home <clears throat> with the older people, giving them a Thanksgiving dinner, a Thanksgiving feast for them today. I'm here today doing all this work by myself with the angel of heaven helping me. I'm videoing this broadcast myself. The work of God <clears throat> must go on. If you have to walk alone, don't stop praising God. Don't stop doing what God tells you to do. Keep on doing what the Lord tells you to do. We're going to continue with our lesson from last week. The bridegroom came. We're going to continue. And y'all know the story about the ten virgins. Five were wise and five were foolish. And we're going to continue coming from... Matthew chapter 25 and verse 10. And it read like this. And while the bridegroom, and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. What I tell you and I today. Let us not play around with our life, with our soul in the world today, mess around in sin. <clears throat> Let us prepare ourselves. Let us get our house in, in order because Jesus Christ is coming back one day. The bride, this will be part two of the, of the wise and fully virgin. And sisters and brothers, we are living in a time now that we need Jesus in our life each and every day. Ain't no time to live around with your soul mingling up in sin. Repent. Come out of sin. Rededicate your life back to Jesus while you have this great opportunity. Because one day, we will not have this opportunity. When Jesus come back in the cloud and every eye shall see him, if you're not ready, you won't be able to go back with the Lord when he come. I'm crying out to every nationality of people around the world who's watching this internet, who is watching this message preached by the internet, repent and get your house in order. Jesus Christ is coming back. If we're not ready, we will be left behind to be carried into a lake that burned with fire and burst on. God don't want that to happen to you. You will send yourself into that lake of fire. God did all he can do for us. When he sacrificed his son Jesus upon the cross for the whole world. Nobody has no excuse of being lost. Or be cast into a lake that's gonna burn with fire and brimstone. 
The lake of fire was not made for the people of God. The lake of fire was made for Lucifer and those angels that fought after him, who messed heaven up with violence and corruption. The first war that had been fought was fought up in heaven. Lucifer got a third of the angel on his side, thinking that he could overthrow heaven away from God. He made one of the biggest mistakes he ever could make. He messed himself up. And all those other angels that follow him, they wish today that they would have never fallen, that they would have never took side with Lucifer. Because them boys will spend eternity in the lake of fire. And we who want to raise today, if we don't live a holy, a sanctified, and righteous life in this land today, that's where we are going also, into that lake. And no doubt, those five virgins who were not ready, they will be cast and thrust into the lake of fire also. Don't let nobody kid you. The lake of fire is real. The bridegroom is going to come back one day. Don't let Jesus catch us with a right undone. As I cry out week after week, trying to get my people to come out of sin. And I'm trying to stay out of sin, trying to keep myself holy, righteous, and sanctified in the Lord. That I can be a help to others. That I can teach them how to come out of sin. Sin is no good. Sin will cause us to go into the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. Don't let our hump head be hard like in the days of Noah. God sent that man, raise up that prophet to preach to that simple generation, telling them to re repent. It's going to rain 40 days and 40 nights. They laugh and joke at the man. I don't know what these five foolish virgins was doing. I know one thing, when the bridegroom arrived, they were not ready. They were not qualified to go into the marriage feast. They were playing up in sin. Playing up in something they had no business of doing. They're professing that they are virgin, professing that they have been born again, like people in the world today. No one is telling a lie, but they're but they holding and, and holding. They got children out of their law. And told them they've been born again. You've been born again. You need to repent of your sin and get your house in order. Because when Jesus come back again, these things will not go back to Jesus. All you will be fit for is to be thrust and cast into that lake that burned with fire and brimstone. That's why I'm crying out my soul to us all today. Let us get our house in order. Let us get ourselves prepared to meet the soon coming King. Give Jesus a hand praise out there in radio, out there in the internet world. I love you. Jesus loves you. God loves you. He gave us only begotten the Son that you can come out of sin. Jesus born into the world, huh? To save us from our sin. And the people are so hard-headed today. They don't want to come out of sin. They want to stay in darkness. They don't want to give up the sin that they are doing in the world today. They don't want to give up the sin that they are enjoying today. Knowing that when you come on the Lord's side, you will have to give rid of all of those sin that you are doing. Because Jesus said no sin, time has a must of sin, but inherit the kingdom of God. Be wise. God give us all a portion of faith. God give us all ability that we can make the right decision. But this entire world is making the wrong decision. They're locked up in sin and doing the fill of the world rather than come to Jesus who can save soul and body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my friend. Give yourself, give yourself to Jesus while you got a chance to do so. Give your life to Jesus while the blood yet running warm in your bed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm in this church up by myself. Ain't nobody hindering me from praising God. Some people can't praise God unless they're in a crowd of people. You better learn to praise Jesus by yourself. Every year in a crowd of people. Hallelujah. 
Look at me, I'm by myself, crying out my soul, telling people to repent, come out of sin. Get your house in order. Because Jesus Christ is coming back one day. Coming back one day. See that five fingers up there? Are the five of the ten were qualified to go into the kingdom, to go into the marriage feast. And these five here, they were locked outside. They were not qualified. They were locked outside. Couldn't get in. Saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Lord, I don't know you. For which you come in, I don't know nothing about you. <clears throat> if you're not living for Jesus, he don't know a thing about you. In order that Jesus knows something about you, we're going to have to eat up God's word and let the word of God be in us. And that's the only way Jesus can know things about us. And that's the only way we can know the Lord. Through the word. Read your Bible. Not enough people are reading the God's word. Read God's word for yourself. Get your house in order. <coughs> I'm Prophet Oda McCarver in the Baker Town community in Midway, Georgia. Crying out to my sisters and brothers all over the world today. Come on, come back to the Lord. While the time presents itself. Hallelujah. We're going to continue on now. Last week, we spoke about they went to buy. See, they weren't fully qualified. They had to go back and get some more gasoline, some more oil to put in their lap. But when they got back, the bridegroom has already, came, already come and gone. The door was locked. The gate was locked. They weren't qualified or fit to meet the bridegroom. Don't let this happen to us. Let us be prepared. Let us be fit to meet Jesus when he come back again. Hallelujah. Yes, when they ran out of their oil, they acted righteous. They asked the other five brothers to give us some of their oil. But they told them no. It was too late then. We can't share with you now. It's too late. We just got enough for ourselves. That's why I cried out my soul to you now. While I got a child to help you, because when that day come, when church is out, you will run to me for help. I can say, I can't help you now. Church is out. Time is up. I can't help you no more. While I was helping you, you ignored me. You laughed at me. You made fun of me. But now, I can't help you now. That was the five wise said to the foolish, we can't help you now. But you go back. To them that sell and buy for yourself, because we just got enough for us. When that day come, I just gonna have enough Holy Ghost for myself, for me to make it up in the middle air to meet Jesus. I don't have time to share now. I'm sharing my blessing with you now, telling you to come on sin, telling you to repent and get your house in order. I'm gonna try to keep my house in order that I can be a help to others, that they can come out of sin. I can't be a whoremonger and tell other people to come a whoremonger. I got to be free from whoremongering in order that the grace of God can work in someone else's life. If they accept the word of God, if they accept what Jesus is saying in the Holy Scripture, <clears throat> how can I tell other liars to stop lying when I'm lying? I, got, I can't be a liar to tell someone else not to lie. I, I, got to, I, I, I can't be a liar. The only way I can help somebody, I got to live that life that I speak about. I got to live that life that I preach about in order that it can be a help to somebody, that they can pick up that Holy Spirit that lives in me. It can be a help to them. Hallelujah. Let's go on with our lesson. The bridegroom can. The bridegroom came. They had all been expecting his coming. You see, just like people in the world today, everybody got the knowledge that Jesus Christ is coming back one day, but they ain't making no preparation and getting their house in order like the fire foolish. They all knew that the bridegroom was coming. That's why they all went out to meet him. 
Because they all knew the bridegroom was coming. In order to get inside that gate, you got to have to be holy, sanctified, righteous. But the five foolish was playing church. Just like people are playing church in the land today. Nobody can tell them nothing. Nobody can instruct them that they're doing wrong. Talk about you can't tell me nothing. Yeah, God got someone to tell you something. If you reject that person, you're rejecting God and Jesus in that person who is speaking to you. <clears throat> if that Jesus loves you a whole longer, and the son of prophet to you, telling you to repent from home on them, and you tell them the prophet to get out of your face, you don't know what you're talking about, you turn it down God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You turn it down Jesus. It's no hope on a fornicator or inherit the kingdom of God. And I'm saying to the old people who are set in the way, it's time for you to, to unsettle your ways. You ain't going back to Jesus like that. Set in your way and do what you want to do. Do what the word of God said do. Love one another. Come out of your ways and dedicate your life back to Jesus. <clears throat> some, of these, some of these old saints, they're not set in the way and you can't tell them that thing. You know it'll get you in the lake of fire. That's why Prophet Micah is crying out on this end of that world, telling every young old Rich and poor, to repent from your sin. Repent, because Jesus Christ is coming back. They all knew <coughs> the bridegroom was coming. They all expected his coming. They had gathered together and were waiting. Uh -huh. Jesus teach that when least expected, the Lord shall return to this earth. When you least expect it, sisters and brothers, when you least expect it, Jesus Christ is going to return to this earth. <clears throat> and everybody tell me they're going to live in heaven. And I said last week, heaven was not promised to you. When you die, you're not going to heaven. When you get up in the resurrection day, you're still not going to heaven. Yes, we're going to meet Jesus up yonder in the midair for a reason. And after that reason has finished its course, then we're coming back from the midair. We're going to inherit this earth, this brand new earth forever. <clears throat> it's going to be a new heaven too, but heaven will be empty. Why heaven will be empty? Because Jesus will be on the throne in Jerusalem. He will take David's throne away from him, and Jesus Christ will be the ruler over the whole world. Just as Jesus up there in heaven on the right hand of the Father, and then Jesus take his rightful position here on the earth in Jerusalem, in Israel, the Father coming to sit on his throne. As Jesus on the Father's throne up in heaven, the Father is coming to sit on the right hand with Jesus on his throne in that new Jerusalem on earth, not in heaven. I mean, the people are deceived by that. That's the trick of the devil to rob you out of your blessing, to rob you out of the promise. The promise was not heaven, the promise was this new earth. The five foolish missed this. Because they stay mingled in sin. They want to keep doing the things of the world like we are doing in our day at the time. We don't want to come out of sin. We want to keep on dancing and frolicking in sin, which is no good. It will cause us to miss our promise, miss our blessing. <clears throat> Wake up, sisters and brothers. We know that he is going to return. But most people today are not expecting his return. Yes, people are saying today, this day was preached up over 2,000 years ago, but Jesus Christ is coming back. He ain't come back yet. But don't you worry. He is not slacking his promise. What the Lord say, he's faithful in what he has said. He says he's coming back. He's coming back. Well, I can say to you all up there today, get your house in order. Get your house together. Because if it's not, you won't be able to meet Jesus up yonder in the middle. You won't be able to meet the man up yonder in the middle. Hallelujah. Come on, let's live a holy, sanctified, righteous in this land today that we can be qualified to meet Jesus in that midair. 
Everybody tell them, go out to heaven. See them put that lie out and you jump on that lie. Why well, see them tell you you go out to heaven? Because see them was thrown out of heaven. He know that he was not ill, not able to get back up there. And so he come down here to deceive the world from their promise. God promised that this earth, this land, could be our home forever. But see the king and brains watch the people, tell them that when they die, they're going to heaven. How can you go to heaven anyway before you have ever been resurrected? Even Jesus couldn't get back to heaven until he had been resurrected under the grave. And we ain't powerful than, than Jesus. How you going to heaven when you're still in the grave sleeping? How you going to heaven when you have when the resurrection dead had not come yet? You see how blind Satan is leading you? You see how blind Satan is robbing you out of the promise? Satan is robbing you out of the promise. God has promised nobody on earth that they're going to heaven when they die. God has promised nobody they're going to heaven after the resurrection. Jesus, I'm going to meet you in the middle of that. And that where I am, there you may be also. We know that Jesus come back, is coming back to live on this earth to be our king forever. Wake up, people. This prophet is trying to help you. I'm not trying to make you do anything. All Jesus called me to try to help you, let you know that it's so many lies have been told on the word of God. Hallelujah. He five foolish told me they was virgin, knowing they was messing up in sin, knowing that they was doing things they had no business of doing. <clears throat> when they come down to the wire, it caught up with them. When they came down to the wire, into that world, they find out they had no power to get inside the gate. Once God, once Jesus locked that gate, you can't get in. Once Noah, once God sealed that door with Noah, Noah couldn't open that door to let them people in. They beat up on the door. They knock up on the door. Noah said, I'm sorry, my friend. God got the key, and you just can't get in. You have to have some power to meet Jesus up yonder in the midair. Hallelujah. You will have to have some power to meet Jesus up yonder in the midair. This world will be destroyed by fire and brimstone falling from hell and above. I'm crying out my soul today to the end of that world to tell men, the women, boys, and girls, sin don't worsen. It don't worsen for you, for you to lose your soul and have to go to the lake of fire and the everlasting damnation. It don't worsen. Because we don't see nothing happening, hearts to all earth today, we taking it for a joke. But it don't be no joke. That's what the people in the old days at the time thought it was a joke. But it was not no joke. No preach what God tell them to preach to that sinful generation. So the command found it was no joke. Living in sin, down up in sin, God destroyed our whole city. So the command. He brought the righteous man and his family out of that city, but he wanted the one of one of the righteous people that got lost. Lord, why turn back? Watching the people screaming, whooping, hollering, and son of alarm, and God turned up to a pillar of salt. Cause he just ignored the voice of God. God to go out the city and don't look back. I mean, the people today are saying they're holy, but they're looking back in sin. Losing their Holy Ghost, losing their power, losing their anointing, <coughs> losing their righteousness. And when they come down to the wire in the last day, you think you got power to make it, and you don't have no power. All your Holy Ghost power and anointing gone. You ain't got nothing to meet you up yonder in the midair. I'm crying out today. Get your house in order. Prophet Makaiva, keep your house in order. To try to help somebody come out of sin. My job is to preach repentance, trying to get people to come out of sin. Give your life, rededicate your life back to Jesus while you have the proper time to do so. Because one day, it will be just like the five foolish. You will ask me for help. And I will say, I can't help you now. Choice is out. Choice is out. While I'm crying out my soul to try to help you, you make fun of me, you laugh at me, you make joke of me, but ain't no joke in time now. When the five wise came back to find out 
church went out, they had no time to joke. They were lost, like in the days of Noah. When, 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 when Noah shut that door and God sealed that door, they found there was no joking time then. It was no laughing time then. It was no fun to make a matter of fun of the problem of God then. The problem of God was inside the ark. <laughs> All those that who were on the outside, their behind was in danger. Cause if I ran 40 days and 40 nights, and no way in the world they can swim and survive in such a horrible storm and flood like that. That's why God had Noah to build the ark for him and his family and for all the animals that he commanded them to replenish the earth when the flood had dried them off the earth. That's where it will be. <laughs> and Jesus, when Jesus come back, God desired that none of us perish, but be people, the 97% of the people go on, on the devil's side. Go on, on the side with the devil, they rather take side with the devil, rather than take side with the man who died for them, the man who gave his only begotten son to die for a sinful world like this. God ain't gonna send you to the lake of fire. We're gonna send ourselves there by being disobedient to the Almighty God. Huh? People are not expecting Jesus to return. We should not just sit down and wait for him to come, but should be busy about the Lord's work. That's why you see me busy. I'm busy about the Lord's work. I'm on radio and plus the internet and plus got the church up and plus go to the nursing home and plus witness to the people out there in the street. Let them know and get your house in order. Jesus Christ is coming back. You are precious in the sight of the Lord. He doesn't give his only begotten son to die for you, you, you and me. He don't want none of us to go into the lake with Satan and the devil and all the angels he threw out of heaven who disobeyed him. He don't want us to go there. That's why he sent for Jesus to die on the cross to save us from our sin. And we're still honking down in sin doing the field of the world. Man God and man and women God and women. Root workers and rich crowd workers all over the land today. People are turning their back on God, trusting in the root man, trusting in the witchcraft, and trusting in the power of that reader, rather than the trust in the Almighty God, the one who got power to do all things. Hallelujah. We should not just sit down, get on and do something in the vineyard of the Lord. But should we build about the Lord like? We want to be found faithful in his service when he return, if Jesus come for to come right now, <clears throat> he find me faithful in the house of God, doing what does say the Lord, cry out, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. I'm saying to my sisters and brothers today, get up out of sin. Sin is nasty. Sin got you naked. Sin don't have no shame. Sin do anything. It is foolishness on the part of any person not to be prepared, huh? That's for sure. When God doesn't give an only begotten son, you, you ain't got no business of being lost. You ain't got no business going to the lake of fire. When God doesn't give his only begotten son to die for sinners like us. He said, uh, huh? I come to save my people from their sin. That's why I was born in the world. I was born in the world to save my people from their sin. And people every day are turning their back on the Almighty God, turning their back on Jesus. Don't be like this five foolish virgin. Saying that they were virgin, saying that they were pure, holy, sanctified, righteous, and knowing that they were playing church. No one ain't fooling nobody but the self, like people in the world today, talk they are a child of God and do all the damnable things that the world has to offer. And cry out that I'm holy and go out to heaven anyhow. And heaven wants to promise to you. Eat up all those lies. Get away from those lies. And get back in the word of God. Begin to read God's word for yourself. And you know when you're going to spend eternity. 
you know, you will know where you will spend everlasting life. Hallelujah. I'm not here trying to make you do nothing. My job is to preach God's word to try to give you a little uplifting, some understanding that you can come back to Jesus while the blood is running warm in his body. While the blood is running warm in the veins. Huh? It was foolish on the part of any person to not be prepared as it was on the part of the, of the five virgin. It wasn't ready. They were playing in church. They were scrabbling the fence. God, Jesus don't want you to scrabble the fence with him. Jesus wants the whole of us. He don't want no half of us. He wants the whole person, the whole being of us. He don't want no part of you. See, I got part of you and he got the Lord. He wants the whole part. My brothers and sisters, it is not hard to live with Jesus. When you study God's word and do what the word of God said, it's not hard to live with the Lord. It is easy. And Matthew 11, chapter 1, 20, 29 and 30, burn an eye. It's like the yoke out easy. <clears throat> and in the heart of the word of God, you just want to, you just want to keep on living yourself in sin. <clears throat> Don't want to give up and turn yourself back to Jesus. Yeah, you can get off that dope, that drug, that marijuana. You got a lot of people say they're Christian and they're, and they're messing up with that stuff. You can get off that stuff. You got to talk to God, talk to Jesus for yourself. Say, so, Lord, I made a great mistake. I want to come off this thing. Help me to get off this, off this drug, Sister Rachel. And the Father in the name of Jesus, he'll get you off it. But you got to ask. You got to talk to Jesus for yourself. You got to talk to the man for yourself. You don't need me to talk for you. Back in the Old Testament, you would have to go to the priest and confess. But see, that one law, Jesus reversed. You don't have to go to the priest. You can go to, to the Father in Jesus' name now for yourself. You will have no excuse. You will have no excuse, my sisters and brothers. God has got everything set in order. People just don't want to be what the word of God is saying. They want to have their way. They want to do what they want to do. But God then did all he can do for us. When he gave up his only begotten son to die on yonder cross for a sinner like you and a sinner like me. I glad I accept Jesus for my personal savior. I am glad I believe Jesus is the only begotten Son of the Father. But I'll be confessing that I am sin. But I got to keep on living righteous. I got to keep on doing the thing that the Word of God is saying. Then I stay saved. I stay holy. I stay sanctified righteous in God. Amazing grace. Ain't hard living for the Lord. Hallelujah. Ain't hard living for the Lord. He just said, it's our easy and light. Yoke is easy, burden and light. And then the heart but 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 living for Jesus. Once you give the mind to Jesus, and then the heart about living for Jesus. People can talk about you all you want. And want to distract you from God. And want to distract you from Jesus. They can call you all kind of name. But you know where your heart and mind at is in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Talk about me all you want, but my mind is steadfast in Jesus. My job is to try to help you come out of your mess, come out of your sin. If you don't accept me, I ain't gonna sit around there driving around with you. I'm, I'm going to go to somebody else, try to reach somebody else. No stand arguing with you all day and all night, try to get somebody else. Let them know that Jesus loved them, that Jesus is concerned about them. I'm in this house by myself with the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Angel, with the Father, and Son, and the Spirit. Oh, uh, ain't nobody else you out there in, in that world stopping you from praising God, stopping you from worshiping God. We have that free liberty here in America. The government is not stopping you from praising God, from worshiping God. But you better put it all the time now that you can, because one day, <clears throat> one day, America will be just like all of us in 
salvation cross the water. You have to worship God the way they want you to worship. They want you to worship God. But you better put your time in now. Get your heart full with the word of God. And when this time come, you stand up for the Lord. You stand up for holiness. You won't buy down to the mark of the beast. Praise God. We will continue with the part three next week. Part three next week. We will continue with part three next week. Hallelujah. God is good. God wants us to, 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 to live that life that we are pleasing in his sight. Next week we're going to preach about the repair I went in. That will be our text for next week. That will be part three of the same message. We got part four, but part next week will be part three. The repair I went in. But don't be like those five foolish. When they came back, they found the gift of luck and they couldn't get in. As I lift up my holy hand today, please let the people out there in the internet world, it don't worth it to dedicate yourself to the devil. But God done did all he can do by giving up his only begotten son to come into the world in the flesh to die for a sinner like you and I, that we can give up sin and we dedicate our life back to Jesus Back to God. It don't worse it to live in sin, then die and have to go to the lake of fire and be tormented forever and ever. Everlasting damnation. It don't worse it. It don't worse it, my sisters and brothers. God raised up Prophet Micaiah in this day of the time, like John the Baptist and all of them, like Noah and all of them, <coughs> to cry against sin. <coughs> He needs to tell everybody crying out for money. But if y'all want to help me, send me a donation. If y'all want, if he does, I'm still preaching. I've been preaching for 37 years. I wasn't put depending on, on the people out there. I would have been starving by now. That's why I'm still working to support my own ministry like Paul did. Paul had to work and sell tent and make tent and support his own ministry. It look like I'm in that same category. <clears throat> but I know it's a millionaire out there. Listen to this internet. God that touched your heart to donate to this ministry. <clears throat> seven million dollars and it won't hurt you. You donate that seven million dollars to this ministry. God can bless you in a triple way. More than you give to this ministry. Hallelujah. He said, don't thou give the prophet a glass of water in the name of a prophet. You shall receive a prophet reward. I can't bless you. The father, the son, that other people can bless. I can't bless you. He tell me to ask. All I'm asking for a donation to help me finance this powerful ministry. And get it all over the world to let people know they got to repent from their sin. They got to repent from their nastiness. They got to repent from sluggishness, from slothfulness, and begin to get busy and do the God work that he signed to your hand to do. As I come to a close, let us pray for some sick and shed in. Father God, there are so many sick and shed in all over the land today. Father God, touch them with a thing of love. Heal the aching pain. Heal the burning fever. Heal the high blood pressure. The cancer. Two brothers, touch them with a thing of love and they have the faith to believe you can do it. They'll be healed. Hallelujah. In the name and do what the word of God said do. They shall be healed in the name of Jesus. Father, we continue to pray for the president and every president and every nation that they will seek God and ask God for divine help how to run and govern these great nations which we are living in today. But Jesus